Hey, welcome back everybody. Happy Monday. Hope we had a wonderful weekend and hopefully a wonderful start to the week as well. And it is unfortunately going to be another busy week here in the severe weather department, which I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, well, how's that the case? I woke up this morning and it was in the 30s, 40s, maybe even 20s, depending on where you live. Uh, so how are we going to get severe weather? Well, uh, oftentimes this time of year, the weather changes quick and sure enough, it's going to do it to us once more uh, by the time this week is over. But before we do get there, we do have this cold stretch to get through and that could include a little bit of snow in portions of the Northeast, and uh, we'll definitely talk about that. Chances have maybe downtrended just a little since the last video I made, uh, but either way, it is still late April and it could snow, so definitely something we should definitely uh, mention here. Uh, now, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. Like the video if you like it, and of course, comment. Let me know where you're watching from and what you're seeing out in your neck of the woods. With that said, though, let's go ahead and jump on into things, and uh, I guess uh, recently I've just been in a picture-taking mood here, uh, so I'll go ahead and show you some more, and and, um, well, I say more. This is really the only one I'm going to show you. But uh, this is from a storm that I'm sure a lot of you in the Carolinas heard about. This storm uh, ended up dropping big-time hail over Rock Hill, South Carolina. The damage was extensive. Uh, we had uh, a gas station, kind of the awning that are above the uh, pumps collapse. We had uh, big-time siding damage to houses, a lot of windows shattered on homes and vehicles. And just quite frankly, storms like this are just quite uncommon in the Carolinas. And uh, honestly, it was one of those things that wasn't really forecasted all that well. I did mention in my video on Saturday, I said, hey, we're going to have some storms work on through with large hail and damaging winds, but uh, even this storm, um, you know, kind of beat my expectations by a good bit. Uh, but I did want to let you know I did have a time or have time to quickly run south, take a picture of it, and kind of storm chase it a little bit. And again, quite honestly, this structure is just something we're not used to in this part of the country. You folks in the plains, though, might be a little bit more used to it. Uh, now, just to give you a general idea of how this uh, kind of the mechanics behind the storm worked is uh, this is this arrow I'm pointing right now is coming from the south. Uh, if I made it look a little more arrow like, let me try that again for you. Um, this arrow, sorry, is coming from the south, and this arrow here is coming uh, out of the kind of north here. Uh, now, this arrow on the right was feeding this storm inflow, and that included very moist, unstable air. Uh, in fact, something that I noticed and something I've never noticed while storm chasing before is as the storm got closer and uh, this kind of inflow here uh, kind of kicked through where I was standing when I took this, the lens on my camera actually fogged up. That's how impressive uh, the inflow was on the storm. And on the other hand, this outflow uh, was counteracting that with the same kind of wind energy. Uh, so all of this together caused a big time mesocyclone or a supercell as you're probably a little bit more familiar with. And this entire lower section of the storm here is what was rotating. In fact, specifically, uh, this section right here really had some tight rotation in it and uh, got close to producing a funnel cloud or maybe even a tornado. Uh, and we'll get the um, report back from NWS GSP later today on exactly what happened, but uh, very likely just very strong straight line winds and very large hail. Uh, some reports were near baseball and tennis size, which again, it's just not something we really see often in the Carolinas. So uh, quite a very interesting event over the weekend. And again, this is a picture I was luckily able to take of it uh, before I myself had to run south <laughs> to avoid uh, getting smashed uh, uh, by some hail. So uh, luckily, uh, we did definitely avoid that. Now, uh, talking a little bit more about the future, we could see more scenes like that, especially over the Great Plains here by the time this week is done. In fact, we've got a couple storm systems that are likely to bring severe weather to that part of the country. So let's go ahead and break this week down a little bit here and prepare you for what's on the horizon. Now, current watches, warnings, and advisories do we, uh, excuse me, well, I got ahead of myself there. Current watches, warnings, and advisories, we do have some frost and freeze um, uh, kind of concerns here in the mid-Atlantic and northeast. Overnight tonight, again, I'll show you those low temperatures, but uh, again, very chilly for this time of year. Uh, definitely not out of the question at all. Uh, again, well below average temperatures for what we would expect this time of year. And up here in the northern tier of the country, we do have some fire hazards today in a lot of these areas. So if you are burning, uh, preferably just don't. And... Um, uh, yeah, just don't burn if you, if you don't have to. But if you do, again, take all those precautions and uh, get the latest information from your local National Weather Service office on kind of what the burning rules are in your location. All right, um, now taking a look here at um, current radar imagery, you'll notice, uh, again, we do have a couple areas of disturbed weather, but overall speaking, uh, things are relatively nice. Now, again, one area off the Carolina coast that has some unsettled weather, another area down into southern Texas, uh, and then another system kind of up into the northern Great Plains. But all things considered, uh, many of us are in a bit of a dry spell right now and kind of in some calmer conditions, which is definitely a good thing. and something that we will take advantage of before things once again change here later on this week. 
Now, taking a look at satellite imagery, there is one kind of glaring, obviously, uh, system here, uh, and it's uh, up here kind of into sections of central Canada and working southward. Now, this uh, is a big pocket of cold air, and uh, it is eventually going to kind of tag team with another pocket of cold air up here into kind of the Hudson Bay area, uh, and that could cause some snowy conditions, potentially, in portions of the interior northeast, specifically those higher elevations, uh, as this kind of moves off south and east, and again, we'll talk about that here in just a moment, but all things considered, that's the main storm system on your screen right now. Now temperatures today, again, it is going to be below average for a lot of folks, many of us not even hitting the 70 degree mark here east of the Mississippi. Uh, but again, I won't uh, bore you too much with this map, just kind of find your location, get that temperature data, and just know, overall speaking, it's probably going to be well below what it should be this time of year. Now getting into tonight, again, same story, well below average temperatures, specifically up and down the Appalachia chain, into the northeast, back down into the southeast, uh, widespread 40s for lows tonight, isolated spots getting into the 30s, and even the 20s up into the northeast, uh, especially in those higher elevations. So again, just find your location on this map for the latest data uh, and forecast, uh, again, for your neck of the woods. All right. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about the storm system that is on the horizon that I mentioned. Let me go ahead and back this map up a little bit. So here we go. This is this afternoon, and here it is, again, kind of starting to work into the country from portions of Canada, really an Alberta Clipper-like system, uh, and uh, it's going to kind of behave like one. Again, kind of getting into the Midwest, uh, kind of uh, into our Tuesday afternoon, and eventually uh, into our Wednesday into the Northeast, and kind of watch what happens here. Uh, again, here's that piece of energy, but another piece of energy, another trough up near Canada is going to kind of try to dig down uh, grab it and phase with it a little bit. That, again, uh, could lead to some uh, moisture left around with that cold air that's going to move in behind us. And uh, again, that could lead to some snowy conditions. Uh, so just to kind of time this out for you a little bit more here, Again, this afternoon and evening, uh, some rainy conditions are possible up into the Midwest and the Northern Great Plains due to that storm system. Uh, definitely not out of the question there. And uh, again, continues to move off south and east. And by the time we're getting into our Tuesday afternoon, pretty widespread rain tomorrow uh, for a big section of the Ohio River Valley up into the Midwest. Most of that snow, though, staying up into Canada at this point. Uh, but notice this high pressure here. This is that cold air, and it is moving south quickly. Uh, and will eventually likely catch up to some of that moisture here going into our Wednesday afternoon. So here we go. This is Wednesday morning and afternoon. You'll notice some blue showing up on your map here as that cold air catches up to some of that moisture, potentially upstate New York, uh, northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, the northern half of Maine, I think are the best uh, places to have the chance of seeing that snow. But rain either way here uh, along the I-95 corridor from kind of uh, D.C. northbound there. Uh, and eventually... Uh, that uh, high pressure system sinks in and we're back to very cold conditions in the east but at the same time another storm system getting cranking out west and again we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail here in just a moment. All right, so future radar potential in the northeast. Uh, again, this is going into Tuesday evening. Rain begins to move in. All rain to start uh, with this system. Uh, it kind of stays that way into Wednesday morning before going a little bit later into Wednesday. Notice this transition from rain to some uh, wet snow here up into upstate New York, eventually here uh, into portions of northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, northern Maine, uh, maybe even back down towards um, uh, portions of Lake Erie. could see some of that transition to snow here. Uh, again into Wednesday afternoon, but this is going to be a quick system. By the time it starts, it's really going to be gone, and waking up Thursday morning, again, just cold air locked into place, uh, and overall speaking, uh, any precipitation should be gone. Now, snowfall totals, um, we'll take a look at a couple maps here. This is our European ensemble members. Again, highest chance of seeing accumulating snowfall up into the northern tip of Maine, but even down into the Adirondacks, northern mountains of Vermont and New Hampshire, could see a dusting to an inch of snow, not out of the question. Uh, and our GFS model agrees with that sentiment. In fact, also kind of adds a little bit more, again, back down here into maybe the Buffalo area. Uh, but again, I really think the best shot at seeing snow is going to be kind of in this circled area on your map. Uh, so, again, not everyone's going to see it, but some of us are definitely going to get some interesting flakes here uh, kind of uh, during the last couple of days of April. So, uh, definitely not super common thing to see, even in this part of the country. All right, outside of there, rain will also be a concern. Again, this is just for the next 72 hours through the Ohio River Valley, even back down towards the uh, Ozarks and the mountains of, or I guess the hills, not really mountains, but the hills of Oklahoma. Could see some rain anywhere from half an inch to an inch in the highest places, but overall, about a quarter of an inch of rain is going to be most likely, uh, most likely here, um, again, through much of the Ohio River Valley and up into Wisconsin and Michigan uh, before all is said and done with this first storm system. 
Now, this is not the only storm system, though. I will go ahead and warn you now. As I mentioned, severe weather is going to come back with a vengeance, and here we go. Thursday afternoon, um, actually, let me back this up a little bit more for you. Uh, we'll start with Wednesday. So, again, as I mentioned, that very cold pocket of cold air showing up. Uh, very cold pocket of cold air. Yeah, well, I guess that is how that works. Um, either, either way, the blue and purple area on your map is that cold air, again, sinking south down into the northeast, but even clipping kind of down into the mid-Atlantic here. Uh, so, we're already cold now. This is going to reinforce that cold air here later this week by the the time we're getting into Wednesday. Again, once again, well below average temperatures in the Northeast. Uh, but don't get uh, too excited if you're a fan of the cooler air because uh, here we go later into the week, Thursday into Friday, and you'll notice we have a lot of troughing out west. That is going to cause ridging in the east. So uh, these warm temperatures now returning to the east, and at the same time, stormy weather returning to the Great Plains in the form of low pressure developing off of these troughs. And it's going to be a bit of a one-two punch. We're likely going to get one storm here forming Thursday. That moves up into the Midwest. And then a second storm, potentially a stronger one, later into the weekend, once again into the Rockies and up into the Great Plains. Uh, so just to give you a general idea, this week is going to kind of flip-flop a little bit. In the beginning part of the week, the east is going to be cooler and drier uh, and uh, kind of nicer, I guess, besides that system up north. Uh, and the west is going to be a little bit warmer. By the time we get to about a week or so out from now, we're flipping the rolls here. A lot of troughing out west. That's going to lead to low pressure and severe weather outbreaks likely. Uh, while in the east, we have a lot of ridging, which is going to lead to a lot of warm gulf air being funneled northward. Uh, and again, we're going to get back in on those more summer-like conditions compared to the spring-like conditions that we're seeing right now. All right, so I'm about to go through a bunch of maps here, and they're all going to look the exact same. Uh, this is our severe weather outlook for every day starting tomorrow. Uh, and again, just to quickly mention, we do have a small marginal risk tomorrow, uh, but again, chance is relatively low with that, and it's in a pretty unpopulated area. So uh, again, not saying that these people don't matter, but I just don't think I really have many viewers from that area. So we'll kind of uh, gloss over that a little bit. But again, tomorrow, marginal risk in portions of Texas and Oklahoma. That's Tuesday. How about Wednesday? All right, same story. We're thinking this isn't too bad. Again, just a marginal risk. Oklahoma City back down kind of near Amarillo. Uh, could see some stronger storms. Nothing too out of the nor uh, ordinary for April. Uh, again, that's Wednesday. Now Thursday. Okay, we're getting in the longer range. And at this point, the Storm Prediction Center needs a little bit more confidence to issue areas uh, from day four on out. And uh, here we go. Already 15% area from Kansas, Oklahoma down to northern Texas. Uh, again, for our Thursday afternoon. Friday afternoon, we're going to do it again, an even bigger area, St. Louis, Kansas City, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Dallas-Fort Worth, Des Moines, Omaha, under the gun potentially for severe weather on our Friday. Are we done yet? Nope, here's Sunday, or excuse me, Saturday, going to do it all again, another area of severe weather potential, uh, right over the heart of Tornado Alley there from Oklahoma, uh, Texas, and into southern Kansas. So why are we so confident about this? Well, uh, as I showed you earlier, that big troughing out west is obviously definitely a big component in uh, kind of bringing confidence to this forecast, but if we look at all the severe weather ingredients and kind of put them together here, what is the probability of seeing severe storms? Uh, again, pretty low early in the week, but some areas in Texas and Oklahoma definitely could see some strong storms. But it's going into Thursday that you'll notice these chances kind of begin to increase a little bit out into the plains. Going into Friday, once more increasing, uh, bigger chances of severe weather. And again, at this point, this is still five days away. Uh, so to see this much confidence in the models is definitely worrisome. Uh, again, Friday afternoon there. Uh, Friday evening, look at that big time area of severe weather potential showing up on our European ensembles. Uh, and uh, that continues into Saturday afternoon here, and Saturday evening, and uh, even potentially into, uh, well, excuse me, this is Saturday, that was still Friday night. Uh, but again, Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, more severe weather potential, and uh, even potentially into Sunday here, that severe weather threat continues before, again, chances die down a little bit after that. All right, final map I'll show you here is temperatures, and then I'll let you go and uh, get on with the rest of your week. But uh, here we go. So again, this afternoon, well below average temperatures for a lot of folks. That continues into our Tuesday afternoon, sorry. Um, although moderating a little bit before, again, that second shot of cold air flies into the northeast in time for Wednesday, Thursday, and even into our Friday a little bit before going into next week. And once again, we rebound, and here come all of those orange and red colors uh, back to bringing us to those above average temperatures. So... Again, don't get too excited if you're a fan of the cooler weather. It's not going to last forever, and unfortunately, with that transition back to warmth, severe weather is going to be back on the horizon, specifically out into the Great Plains here, uh, going into really the second half of this week. 
Alrighty, well if you enjoyed the video, definitely let me know in the comments if you have any questions, just ask them and again I'll try to get to them, but I will uh, warn you, it's kind of final exam time period, so I'm uh, pretty booked here uh, in the school department. So also if I do miss a video over the next week or two, just know, again, I'm working through finals right now, so I uh, cannot guarantee we'll have a video every day. In fact, I know I missed yesterday, uh, and I apologize about that, but um, again, here on Monday with an update for you. So uh, anyway, have a great rest of your day, and happy Earth Day as well, I forgot to mention that, and I will see you all next time.